Welcome to MacBook Lessons number three, a lesson a day made easy on Facebook. Today we're going to be talking about users. When you signed on to your MacBook for the first time, you set up a user account. Today we're going to learn how to set up additional users so that you and your family can share the computer and not interrupt each other's settings so that your mouse works the way you want it and their mouse the way that works the way they want it and so on. So we're going to first go into System Preferences. And in System Preferences, you actually have under System, Users and Groups. So if you click on Users and Groups, you can come in here and you have to unlock right here before you begin creating new users. So it's going to ask you for your computer password. You go ahead and put it in. It'll unlock the computer. And now I have this plus and minus button right here that'll allow me to add additional users if I want to. So if I click the plus button, I can create a new user. It'll actually fill in the account name for me, but I can go ahead and change it if I want to. I put in a password, and if I need a hint to remind me what it is, I can put one in there and then create user. You do not have to have a password. However, if you have children, you may want to put a password on for those kids. My uh, five-year-old could do passwords, so they're very helpful and they keep people out of places they shouldn't be. So now we have the test user. You'll notice I can set my Apple ID right here, which allows me to put in the one I've created on my phone or on my iPad and that'll set up my account specifically with my username. It will not put my settings on any other user. So I can go ahead and do that. Also down here if you want that person to be an administrator you can click right here. If you make them an administrator they can then use their password to add programs and that type of stuff and then enable parental controls right here. I have to say that parental controls is not exactly perfect. We've had issues with it before not being able to get on certain websites or whatever even though it is wide open and the controls were only controlling how long the person was on the computer. So while it's nice to have it's not perfect so you need to pay attention if there are any issues once you enable it. The parental, parental controls are very nice. Uh, they actually, we'll go ahead and click on I'll show it to you. When you come into the parental controls, it'll actually give you the opportunity to, opportunity to create time limits. So the weekday time limits, the weekend time limits, the bedtime, school nights, and weekend. You can come in here and disable profanity, for instance, uh, printer. If you have a small child that likes to print, you might want to turn that off. You can force them to not be able to change the password so you can always get in. There are some other things in here like the simple finder so that the kids don't get confused when they're in there if you want them to have very specific stuff. Limiting the applications they use. Of course the web also limits the applications they can use so they have a basic setup of good sites that you can use but you can customize that as well. This will allow them to join the game center or not and limit the mail and messages they can create. And that's pretty much the, the parental controls as they stand. Once you're done with that, you can go back to uh, into the users and groups. You're still open, so you can still see test user, you can still see your stuff. Uh, the nice thing right here is that you can reset your password. So if you are in here and you can't remember what it was set at, you as the administrator on any administrator account, so this account right here, if you were logged into this account, you can actually change the password under this one. So as you can see, I can go into any and reset the password because I'm an administrator. And that's this button right here. Basically that's creating users in a nutshell. I want to show you how to change the user now. If I'm in my user, which is MacBook Lessons, and I want to change it, all I have to do is click on it. I can quickly choose another user in this list, 
and it'll give me the login window. I put in their password and it'll flip me to that setup immediately. It's really nice if you have a work email and a home email and they use the same, for instance, Gmail. You can set up both, one under one user and one under another user, and you'll quickly be able to switch between the two and they won't get confused with each other if you want it to stay completely separate. I love that idea and I love what Users and Groups makes available to me as a iTunes user and as a photo sharing family and that it gives me the opportunity really to share a whole lot of stuff but not share the important things like my uh, contacts and calendars and that kind of stuff. So that's basically it in a nutshell. I hope that was helpful to you and I look forward to bringing you some more information tomorrow.